Hello students, welcome back. So this is one of a requested video on one of my posts and that is Archibacteria and their economic importance. Okay, so just if you get a question saying uh, what is or write a short note on economic importance of Archibacteria, then you can mention following points which we will discuss here. So you can mention these following points as your starting paragraph in your starting paragraph of your answer. So basics about Archibacteria. So they are considered as most ancient form of life, right? Very old form of life. And they have evolved separately from bacteria and blue green algae. Okay. So there is difference between bacteria and blue green algae. Uh, if we compare with the Archibacteria, and thus they are classified separately. So most of the Archibacteria, I'm saying most of them, okay, not all Archibacteria, most of Archibacteria, they exist in harsh environment, okay, or they are adapted to live in harsh environment. They are also widely distributed and are found alongside bacteria in many environments, including soil and water. That means it is not necessary that uh, you will just find Archibacteria in harsh environments. You can find them in our day to day uh, surroundings. OK, with bacteria. OK, means both bacteria and Archibacteria can be found in some samples of soil and water as well. They are smallest independently living single cell organisms and they range in size of 0.5 to 1 micrometer in diameter. DNA lies in cell cytoplasm and cell membrane is composed of phospholipids that surrounds the cell. Cell wall is made up of proteins, carbohydrates and lipids and you get um, pseudomurin okay, instead of peptidoglycan in the cell wall. They are classified into separate domain and kingdom. So, the so there is three domain six kingdom classification and it is given by Carl Boos and Three domains are like bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Under bacteria, kingdom is just one that is eubacteria. Under archaea, there is again a single kingdom that is archaebacteria. But eukarya has four kingdoms that is plants, animals, fungi, and protist. Okay, so this was given by Carl Wools. And now we are just focusing on archaea that is kingdom archaebacteria. So Archibacteria, they include mainly three groups as hyperthermophiles, methanogens and extreme halophiles. So hyperthermophiles are one which are uh, adapted for living at higher temperatures and examples are pyrodictium and sulfolobus. And methanogens are one which uh, produce methane gas and the example is methanobacterium. Extreme halophiles are one which love living in high salinity. Okay, so these are the main example. Oh, sorry, three groups of which the in case of economic importance, the industrial interest is in temperature, salinity, and pH. So next is about characteristics. So first is unique cell membrane and cell wall chemistry. So Archibacteria, they have cell membranes which are made up of ether linked phospholipids while bacteria and eukarya, oh, sorry, eukaryotes, they both have their cell membranes made up of ester linked phospholipids. Okay, so the difference is Archaea, they have ether link phospholipids and eukaryotes and bacteria, they have ester link. Then the cell wall lacks peptidoglycan but it has similar structure which is known as pseudomurin okay then unique gene transcription this is the second characteristics so archaeobacteria they have a single round chromosome like bacteria okay which is present in cell cytoplasm but their gene transcription is similar to that which occurs in the nucleus of eukaryotic cell this leads to the strange situation that most genes involving in the most life functions of archaebacteria such as uh, production of the cell membrane or uh, are more or they are like more closely shared with the eukarya and bacteria but genes which are involved in the process of gene transcription they are most closely shared with eukarya and archaea 
okay so that is the difference that um, in case of gene transcription of genes you can say they are more closely shared with eukarya and bacteria then this leads to some scientists to uh, propose that eukaryotic cells they arose from fusion of archaea with bacteria okay and there are many theories supporting this and possibly possibly when an archaea bacteria begin began living endosymbiotically inside a bacterial cell so it is thought that uh, lokia archaeota may be a transitional form between archaea and eukaryota then the only archaea bacteria are capable of methanogenesis a form of anaerobic respiration that produces methane so archaea bacteria who use other forms of cellular respiration they also exist but one type of them is methanogens and they are or methane producing bacteria uh, cells are not found in bacteria or eukaryote so difference next is difference in ribosomal rna that is r rna that suggest that they diverged from both bacteria and eukarya at a point in a distinct past so now about economic importance so we have learned that archaea bacteria they live under harsh and hostile conditions and that their enzymes can survive these conditions so we can extract these enzymes and use it or use them under industrial application different different industrial processes so first is like lipases can be used for different industrial processes like grease hydrolysis esterification then inter inter esterification trans esterification and organic biosynthesis then again lipases are used for uh, in many uh, processes for paper industry milk industry then in case of dyed products leather industry and pharmaceuticals then proteases they have been used in the synthesis of dipeptides and starch processing and in dna manipulation then cellulases hemicellulases xylanases uh, xylanases have had an important application in bleaching of paper and in environmental contamination so bio detergents they possess enzymes such as amylase okay so bio detergents they have all the mixture of all such enzymes that is amylase protease um, cellulase and lipase that are resistant to extreme conditions then thermozymes thermozymes are one which are uh, stable at high temperatures okay so thermozymes such as amylase from pyrococcus furiosus has had applications in mutational studies then thermozymes have been used in creation of optical nano sensors and analytes then about acidophilic archaea so acidophilic archaea means acid loving archaea okay acidophiles are organisms that grow at an optimum ph below 3 to 4 okay so very acidic conditions so acid acidianus uh, is one of the genus from archaea bacteria which is facultatively anaerobic thermoacidophilic archaea bacteria okay so enzymes from these uh, acidophilic microorganisms they possess a great potential for biotechnology and industrial applications in biofuel and ethanol production so cellulitic and xylanolytic enzymes are used in um, in an acid milieu at greater temperatures and acidity to help hydrolyze cellulitic materials okay so these enzymes which are used in case of high acid and high temperature conditions they are uh, or they work efficiently to hydrolyze your cellulitic material making them more manageable so next is about halophilic archaea bacteria so halophilic microorganisms they are capable in living in high salt concentrations okay for at least one molar nacl that strong halophilic conditions they can survive and they have established different chemical structural and physiological modifications that allow the selectivity and stability of proteins with physio physiochemical properties examples are haloferrax and halo arcula so lipases and esterases from these halophiles they have great potential in industrial applications 
mainly in production of polyunsaturated fatty acids in case of some food and bio diesels okay so these were applications for thermozymes acidophilic microorganism acidophilic archaebacteria and halophilic archaebacteria then other applications are bioremediation of toxic contaminants in wastewater then uh, cran archaea are thought to be very abundant and one of the main contributors to fix carbon then archaea have been utilized in mixed consortia with bacteria for bio mining bio leaching anaerobic digestion and soil wastewater rem uh, remediation then methanobacterium a very good example for uh, production of biogas then some thermophilic archaea are used in immobilized enzyme systems and methanogenesis is applied to anaerobic treatment of sewage sludge and municipal waste okay so these are different applications or we can say economic importance of archaea so i hope you like this video do share my videos with your friends and do hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel thank you